I will therefore lead a government that models exemplary leadership and mobilizes citizens to collective action and ownership of a compelling and bold vision of the Enugu state of our dreams. On security, I'll tell you very quickly that we will pursue total human security by addressing the physical and non-physical factors of insecurity, partnering with security agencies and local communities, ensuring that equal treatment under the law, and deploying technology to enhance surveillance, data collection, and response time. Security is key. Without security, no development can take place. And so this security is something that will receive my attention for every single day that I'm in office. And uh, for more insights on his plans for Ndenugu State, Frank Wicked Jr. joins us now from Enugu. Frank, thank you so much for joining me tonight on the program. And of course, let's get straight into it. Um, Enugu State, since we returned to democracy in 1999, has been predominantly a PDP state. It's never gone elsewhere. And uh, the PDP is a party you were a part of until March of this year when you decamped and eventually emerged as the flag bearer of uh, ABGA to become the next governor. Talk to us about your chances, really, in uh, an in a PDP-dominated state like Enugu, your chances as the ABGA candidate. Thank you so much, uh, Amaka. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, tonight. And, um, uh, okay, it appears you're still uh, asking questions. Actually, I'm at, I have asked you the question. I'm expecting your response. Go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, Amaka. It's such a uh, pleasure to be uh, with you. Um, first of all, yes, I used to be in the PDP. But I want to assure you that uh, my chances are extremely bright. Because in the last seven years under the PDP-led administration in Enugu State, the state has become one of the most retrogressed in terms of human capital development. Uh, over the last seven years, a water crisis has persisted. Over the last seven years, insecurity has reached unprecedented levels. Under the last seven years, Enugu, the economy of Enugu has shrunk in terms of our GDP. And it is such a shame that today we are third from the bottom. This never used to be the case. Uh, in the last seven years, the roads in Enugu, in fact, Enugu has become the pothole capital of uh, Nigeria. You only need to uh, be here or talk to your correspondents here or speak to relatives and friends you have here to really understand what I'm talking about. In the last seven years, um, in, uh, unemployment um, has, has really uh, worsened. And I could go on and on. So the level of discontent has never been as high as it is today. The people are the wiser. And so you find that even as um, uh, uh, the party uh, moves around uh, communities, uh, distributing indomies, people are rejecting these things. People are saying, you know what, uh, a packet of indomie is way too cheap for us to uh, uh, sell our votes for and then uh, uh, enable you to continue the, uh, the, the governance brigandage that we have in this state uh, today. Over the last uh, uh, seven years, the, the people of Enugu have, you know, have continued to live in, in fear in ways that has never been the, uh, the case. So um, there are other issues as well uh, which uh, 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 you know, make me confident that the All Progressive Grand Alliance under my leadership will uh, take over the governance of Enugu uh, in 2023. Um, a water crisis is, uh, is, is incredible. It's just absolutely incredible. And um, you know, we used to have one of the cleanest cities in Nigeria uh, with motorized sweepers um, you know, just a short seven years prior. But that is no longer the case. And so even as you come into the city of Enugu, as it Oyama today, you'll be amazed to see refuse dump in the middle of the express road. This is what welcomes you into the city of Enugu. Well, so the people are really, 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 really tired. Okay. And so we, um, I'm supremely confident that uh, we would um, be, uh, we'll be elected. My party will be elected. Absolutely confident and optimistic that you will be elected. Yes, you're even winning hearts. Looking at the fact that you have picked a woman, speaking about the entrepreneur, Dr. Edith Uguayo, to be your running mate, that has won a lot of hearts. But, you know, the truth is, you're not really known as a top politician in Enugu State. We know you more as a technocrat, <laughs> more than anything else. But the question that, you know, 
People of Enugu State are asking is how you intend to convert your technical skills into governance, really, to better their lives with the seven uh, pillars that you have come up with that you want to transform their lives. Well, thank you so much, Amaka. I'm really uh, happy that you know that um, I am not uh, the run-of-the-mill uh, politician. And that is really uh, my strength. And I believe that when you talk about the run-of-the-mill politicians, you're talking about people who have no other means of livelihood. All they do is politics, right? But when I have not been in office, I have devoted myself to other uh, important and um, uh, uh, to, to, to other important endeavors. And um, at this point in time, it is a technocrat like myself that you need. Uh, it's, it's a technocrat, someone who has had a significant exposure, significant experience. I've proven myself at various stages of my political career, starting with my time as consultant to government uh, on economic affairs in 1999, to my time as state coordinator of the Community County Council, a poverty alleviation initiative for rural communities, which saw me as the only politician today that has ever visited all the 209 communities as they then were in the state. So I understand the problems. Um, the, that is, you know, I, I come to this uh, party with significant experience as former chief of staff for about two years and about three months running the government house, sitting very close to a governor and then understanding how these things are run. And so I come to the table with significant experience as a member of the federal cabinet in about three, four ministries at a time, Minister for Youth Development, Minister for Information, Minister for Communication, Minister for Intergovernmental Affairs. And then I also come to the party with significant experience as former director general of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, where I um, cultivated extensive networks in the business sector, and then also really helped to advise government on uh, economic uh, reforms, which really you know, helped uh, you know, uh, to contribute to economic development at the federal level. So I believe that it is these skill sets which put me in the best position to become the governor and to deal with the significant challenges that confront uh, the state. So I'm really happy that you understand that I'm not the, a typical run-of-the-mill uh, politician who would have to um, you know, uh, wait or trudge, uh, trudge the corridors of power, seeking for appointments and things like that. No, I'm a very busy individual, and I'm very, very happy of the things that I do, even when um, I'm not uh, in a political office. Right, and of course, you know, the truth is, uh, looking at your track record is undeniable. You come with a lot of experience, uh, but at the end of the day, one thing hangs over not just your head, but the head of the party, because as it stands, APCA still has a leadership crisis as it is. So talk to me about how, uh, you know, some says that this might impede your chances. So APCA, you say, is poised to win the elections, even with the crisis within the party? No, Amaka, I'm afraid I think you're in it. <laughs> that makes me laugh a bit. I mean, uh, APCA does not have any leadership uh, crisis. Um, at any level whatsoever, uh, the uh, leader of our party, at this time the national chairman, is, the, is uh, Ozombo, Dr. Ike Oye. And this matter has been laid to rest, and as a matter of fact, it's not unlikely that certain individuals who may have mutilated uh, uh, court judgment um, you know, may face criminal uh, charges as we speak. Uh, but essentially was speaking, was that matter has would, been laid to rest. Actually, and um, I, I Mose would actually argue that. I know it's gone to the Supreme Court, but the judgment has still been interpreted. But for now, I would have to say thank you so much for joining us and all the best, you know, with uh, your quest to become the next governor of Enugu State. Frank Weke, Jr., candidate of APGA in the forthcoming gubernatorial polls. Thank you for being here today.